Hey guys, this is Alexei, and I'm recording a small tutorial about my Cinema 4D version of Chronosculpt. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. Lightwave has made this new tool called Chronosculpt. What it lets you do basically is it lets you have an animation like this, and you can sculpt things onto it, like uh, while, while once it's animated. So, for example, if you have them walking here, you can add the, you know, you can sculpt pieces of it, and then it'll automatically, you know, it'll propagate that through the animation. Uh, they also have a lot of other stuff, but this is the stuff that, really, that I really like. I like the idea of being able to sculpt things that are already animated. So, and I decided to find a way to do it in Cinema 4D, and I did. So, they use their Limbic format. That, their Chrono Sculpting works with everything. Like you can export into it, and then you can edit it, and you can bring it back to your program of choice. But I decided to see what you can do similar in Cinema 4D. And this is what I came up with. Uh, first thing, I discovered the Limbic format, which is here, export ABC, which is great because uh, Cinema 4D is not very good at caching dynamic animations. Like, it caches them, but then there's constant problems. Sometimes if you recache something in the middle, or if you delete the cache while you're not at frame zero, or if you copy a file and paste it into a new file, you lose all the cache data, which is annoying. Let me show you a simple example. Let's get a plane, a cube, plane. The cube, a little bit smaller, bring it up here, control drag, move it across, let's move them up, let's make this plane bigger. Okay, these two cubes are simulation tags, soft bodies, this thing is simulation collider body, play, play, play. Um, if you press play, they're not very soft because the cubes have no subdivisions. Let's bring our subdivisions up. Let's bring this thing actually into here. Okay, so now if we press play, we have our animation, which is great. Okay, so we have our animation, which is well fine. Now let's say I want to move this animation to a new scene. And I've cached it, so let's go where is our cache, bake all. And now we have the animation, we can play it forwards, we can play it backwards. And let's say we have it exactly the way we want it. We use some, you know, in a production environment, we use some stand-in objects, some, you know, proxy objects. Now we want to paste it to the main scene. Now, if we're, say, in frame 18, and we select all of this, and we go, or just without the plane, just like these, because we only need the two cubes. So we select them, we press Control C, we make a new C, Control N, we press Control V, and uh, what, what is this? Why, where is my cache? Cache is gone. Annoying to say the least, because now you have to rebuild all the other colliders and stuff if you have lots of them, whereas maybe you just want the animated objects. So the great thing is that uh, with this new Alembic format, is we can go export Alembic. And let's export it here from our Chronos Cult folder. And let's call this cubes. And press OK. And now we can just drag it back into Cinema 4D. We can select option, we can press OK. And here we have it. We have our file with the animation. And we can delete this plane if we don't like it. And we still have our animation. And we can copy these anywhere we want. We can go Control C, we can go back to our previous file, and we can paste them in here, and we can move them. Probably. We can make a new null, we can put them in there, and we can move the null. And there we have it, we have another animation. And we can rotate them so they can fall this way. All kinds of great stuff. And they don't care about this plane, like this plane is irrelevant to them. They just have animation, point level animation. Uh, the nulls actually keep their positions, which is nice. And they pull stuff out of the file on your hard drive. So, super useful. Let's go back to our Alimbic file. Let's get our plane back. Okay. Now to the Chronos Cult file. That was just a useful tip for, you know, transferring baked dynamic simulations from one scene to another, just keeping them in the pipeline. Uh, so, Chronos Cult. Let's throw these into some hyperdermes. Just uh, keep in mind that these guys do, since they're animations, 
the keys are keyed on the world coordinates. So if you, for example, hold an L key, make a hypernode, it'll offset it. So if you make a hypernode, make sure it's zero coordinates. Even better, make a null and put the null on the hypernodes and then put the two cubes into the null. There you go, and you have your animation. Now, however, if you notice here, we have a gap, which isn't quite pleasant. And we want to we want to make this more squash and stretchy. We don't I don't think it's stretchy enough. I think it needs to squash more. So let's get this object. Holding a shift key, and stick a correction to form in it. Uh, tilde x or to make to give it to zero out all the coordinates. Not important, but it makes it prettier. So let's go to point mode. Let's get our brush tool out. Unfortunately, the sculpting tools don't work in this point mode. So, yeah, but this brush tool is still good enough for what we need. And then we can squash it. We can move it over here. Squash it out. And then, and now, obviously, the problem is that if we drag it up, it just stays like that. So what we do is just position where we wanted it to be squashed. We now just keyframe the strength. And then we go back a couple of frames. And we keyframe it to zero. And then we can just click and control click and drag it here. So. As you can see now, it squashes when it lands and it falls back. So, on this keyframe, let's also add another deformer. Correction deformer. Filter X, zero out all the coordinates. And let's sculpt it as well. Let's really make it squash under the pressure. Good, now keyframe, move it back. Keyframe to zero. Control, we can drag it over. And we have our animation. Squash and stretch, right? See? How much how nice is that? And here example, I want this guy to stretch more. I don't think he's enough squashed. Okay, it's more here. Boom. And we have our animation. How neat is that? And you can add more than one correction deformer. You know, it's if you want him to stretch one while he's flying through the air, you can get this guy and you can control click and drag him and go to reset. And move these frames across. And now here let's stretch them out. Add some squashing to him. And now there we go, now we have first this and then this animation. Let's move these guys a bit back, so sorry. So we move them together and, and now we have this squash animation. It's not particularly good right now. I think we need a bit more time here. Let's move it out maybe. There we go. And that's what you know, that's what it's Chronoscope. So you can do this with character animations. You know, once you have a character animated, you can export them as an alembic, and then you can bring them back, and you can just sculpt the changes that you want uh, where you want them. Now, if someone can make a script, which when you select an object and you run the script, it adds a correction deformer and three keyframes in the right place, that will be awesome. I'm going to look into how to make that myself, but I don't know how to make that yet. But that would be sweet for this kind of workflow. Still got to figure out how to use textures because I can't see any UV maps here. Although here it says UV set, so maybe they work. I don't know. It's something to look into. Hopefully they work. But yeah, enjoy it. If you make a script, be sure to write it to me. Check out Chronoscope. That stuff's in the description. Yeah, I'll see you later.